รายการนี้เป็นรายการทั่วไปสามารถรับชมได้ทุกวัยสวัสดีครับ Hi, you're watching Hello English, your English program. I am your host, b u k r i t r a i r a t Now, Thailand is well known for our sweet and delicious desserts, right? But did you know that these desserts also come with a great aroma and smell to it? Now, the way that the aroma is made into the dessert is quite an unusual process. Let me show you. We use these. This is called a scented candle. So, if you want to know. How these scented candles make our desserts smell great? Let's go learn more in English magazine. Besides looking beautiful and tasting good, another thing these Thai sweets cannot do without is having a nice scent. Where did the distinctive fragrance of these Thai desserts come from? Let's find out the answer from someone who makes old-fashioned Thai sweets and learned the method from his ancestors more than 70 years ago. สิ่งนี้ครับคือเทียนอบเป็นสิ่งที่ทำให้ขนมไทยหลายๆอย่างมีกลิ่นหอมของกลิ่นเทียนอบเช่นขนมกลีบบำรุงขนมผิงขนมไทยหลายๆอย่างนะครับต้องใช้เทียนอบตัวนี้ครับ Scented candles are an important accessory for making Thai sweets. It's a delicate task that requires skill, patience, and great care in every step. The ingredients for scented candles are genuine beeswax, sandalwood, frankincense, bergamot peel. And the bark of Alixia r i n e w o r d Thai. All of these have to be finely ground. Next is essence of perfume that is extracted from six kinds of flowers. And lastly, cotton string for the wick. Preparing the wicks. This is a process for making the wicks. This is a process for making the wicks. This is a process for making ไส้เทียนที่เราตัดออกจากจากม้วนใหญ่เนี่ยที่เราตัดออกมาเส้นหนึ่งยาวประมาณ20เซนเนี่ยเราจะเอามารวมรวมรวมกันแล้วก็จะทาด้วยน้ําหอมที่เราผสมไว้จากน้ําหอมกลิ่นกลิ่นกุหลาบมะลิกระดังงาน้ํามันจันหลายๆอย่างที่เราผสมไปเรียบร้อยแล้วเนี่ยเราจะฉีดลงไปที่ไส้ฉีดลงไปที่ไส้เทียนแล้วค่อยๆลุลูบให้มันกระจายทั่วทั่วทั่วทั้งเส้นเส้นไส้เทียนเนี่ยครับพอเสร็จแล้วได้ได้ไส้ที่ชุ่มไส้เทียนจะชุ่มด้วยน้ำมันหอมแล้วเนี่ยให้เอาไปเก็บไว้ในในกล่องสักสองวันเพื่อให้ความชื้นของน้ำมันนี่กระจายไปได้ทั่วไส้เทียนแล้วถึงนำมาเอามาเอามาคว่นเทียนต่อครับ Mixing the scented candle ingredients. ส่วนผสมของเครื่องหอมที่จะผสมในทำเทียนอบเนี่ยครับสิ่งแรกที่เราใช้คือผงกำยานผงเอ่อผงกำยานตัวนี้ช่างแล้วให้ได้ตามที่ต้องการนะฮะพอได้แล้วเอามารวมไว้ต่อไปก็ใส่ผงชลูดชลูดนี่เป็นเปลือกไม้ช่วยให้ติดไฟไปรวมไว้ด้วยกันอันนี้คือผงจันตาจันเทศต่อไปที่จะใส่คือผิวมะกรูดอันนี้ทำจากผิวมะกรูดฝานออกมาตากแดดแห้งประมาณทักสามสี่วันแล้วไปบดละเอียดเป็นผง
อันนี้จะช่วยเพิ่มกลิ่นหอมเราผสมผสมอีกอย่างหนึ่งคือน้ำตาลทรายน้ำตาลทรายตัวนี้ใส่ลงไปเพื่อให้ช่วยการติดไฟเพื่อให้ชิ้นอบติดไฟได้ดีขึ้นเมื่อได้ส่วนผสมทั้งหมดแล้วเนี่ยก็คนให้เข้ากันทั้งหมดอันนี้ก็ได้จะได้ไอส่วนผสมของผงเครื่องหอมที่พร้อมจะไปะรวมกับคลิปพึ่งเพื่อควันเป็นเทียนอบแล้วครับ Candle rolling steps ข้างที่พึ่งให้ให้ให้ให้ได้ตามที่ต้องการก่อนเสร็จแล้วเอาที่พึ่งเนี่ยไปหลอมหลอมให้ละลายบนเตาใช้ไฟอ่อนๆรอรอจนที่พึ่งละลายให้หมดหลังจากที่พึ่งละลายดีแล้วที่พึ่งเริ่มเย็นตัวลงบ้างก็เอาไอ้ผงเครื่องหอมที่เราช่างเตรียมไว้เนี่ยอันเนี้ยผสมลงไปในขี้พึ่งแล้วคนคนต้องคนตลอดเวลานะครับคนให้จนจนที่พึ่งมันเริ่มแข็งตัวเย็นเย็นแข็งตัวจนปั้นเป็นก้อนได้ให้แบ่งออกมาให้พอดีกับทำเทียนอบหนึ่งเล่มช่างช่างแล้วแผ่แผ่เป็นแผ่นแบนไว้ใช้น้ำมันหอมแบบเดียวกับที่เราใช้ทาที่ใส่เทียนนะครับทาลงบนพื้นโต๊ะเพื่อไม่ให้ขี้พึ่งตัวนี้ติดติดกับพื้นโต๊ะปั้นขี้พึ่งออกมาเป็นเป็นแท่งแบนแบนเอาใส่เทียนวางไปแล้วค่อยๆม้วนม้วนให้ให้ขี้พึ่งเนี่ยมาหุ้มหุ้มใส่เทียนอันนี้ครับทำพยายามให้ขี้พึ่งห่อใส่ให้ทั่วฮะพยายามให้ให้ใส่อยู่ตรงกลางคึงคึงเอ่อตัวขี้พึ่งให้กลมแล้วก็ให้พึงแรงหน่อยให้ตัวขี้พึ่งนี้แผ่ออกไปคุมปลายใต้เทียนทั้งสองข้างจนได้ที่แล้วก็ควนตัวเทียนขึ้นมาให้ได้ได้รูปอย่างที่เราต้องการพอได้รูปตามที่ต้องการแล้วหลังจากนั้นก็แต่งแต่งตรงปลายปลายของเทียนทั้งสองข้างตัดที่พึ่งส่วนที่เกินออกไปกลึงปลายให้เข้าที่นะตัดไอ้ไส้เทียนส่วนที่เกินออกครับอันนี้ก็เป็นเสร็จกับเทียนอกที่ที่ทำไว้ making scented sweets การจะอบเชนอบให้หอมต้องจุดเชนอบให้ให้ไฟลุกท่วมสูงประมาณสักเนี่ยสองสามนิ้วเลยครับเอียงให้ให้ตัวไฟมันไหม้เข้าไปถึงเนื้อเนื้อเทียนมันจะได้ไหม้พวกเอ่อเปลือกไม้หอมหรือว่ากำยานจะได้มีกลิ่นหอมหาภาชนะรองกันพวกเท่ามันจะหล่นลงไปในขนมเวลาจะดับไปเทียนเนี่ยให้ให้ดับก่อนเอาให้ดับก่อนแล้วค่อยใส่ลงไปในภาชนะแล้วค่อยปิดฝาเพื่อให้ควันมันอบอยู่ในภาชนะนี่นะครับทิ้งไว้ประมาณสักครึ่งชั่วโมงแอนด์เดอร์ยูแฮฟอิ
Now here in my hand, I have a plate of some Thai sweets. So not only are they really colorful and delicious, but they smell really good. Yes. Here, if you don't believe me, smell for yourself. So now you know where the smell comes from. It's very unusual, isn't it? Now, up next, our guest is a returning guest who used to be in our show a few years back when she was 14. And she had written her own fantasy novel, which was an amazing thing to do for such a young age. And today, she is back with us to update her success with us. So let's go to Tottenham and talk to Nong Bopia in English Club. Swadikap, hello everyone, welcome to English Club. I'm Tosatam Piem Samboon. Today I'm on a location with a very special person. She is an author and also an agency that turns great books into amazing movies. And today we're gonna meet her and also she's been on our program before but now two years later she has grown and she has also accomplished her third installment of her amazing book series. So let's meet today's special guest. Please welcome Kun Peer. Yeah, Swadikab. Great to be back on the show. Thank you for having it's me. It's great to have you here and it's so amazing how time flies. We used to have you here about two <laughs> or three years ago. Of course we remember your great books but before we go into your career and your books, your hobby. Could you please introduce yourself to our viewers? Yeah, sure. So my name is Pierre. I write, write under the pen name Pierre at Dawn. Uh, I'm a young adult author and I currently work in Los Angeles uh, in the United States. Just then I got a bit tongue-tied because not only are you an author, you have a new career now. What is your career apart from writing amazing yeah. books? So I started off as a writer for children's literature and yeah. young adult novels. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, as I've grown older, I moved um, from Bangkok to Los Angeles and I'm working there. I work at a talent agency, yes. working with writers, directors, authors, mm -hmm. and sort of living in between uh, the world of publishing and books and Hollywood. Mm. So what do you do yeah. in this current job? So I work in primarily uh, book to film rights. So yes. a lot of people, when they want to make a movie out of a book, they mm -hmm. would come to us and we would represent authors from you know all varieties around the world mm -hmm. and we would help them negotiate uh, the rights to their material to turn into either a film uh, or right. a TV show. So for example, let's say Harry Potter, mm -hmm. a company would ask you how much is it for Harry Potter, yes. the series, and you would give them a price, right? Right, so in that scenario, you yeah. know, um, your client would be J.K. Rowling, the author, yes. and then a company, in this case Warner Brothers or Heyday, mm -hmm. uh, would come to you and ask, I want to adapt the series into a movie, TV mm -hmm. show, whatever, um, you know, we'd love to offer this much amount of money and you would negotiate it. But a lot of the times with properties like Harry Potter that are right. so big, mm -hmm. you don't have just one player, you have multiple players and multiple bidders. That's the thing, how do you choose? Is it who bids the most money, who's the most suitable, or <laughs> or the director that they yeah. choose, the actors? How, how do you pick a company? So it's definitely all of those that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I mean, obviously a lot of money is great for the author, but that's right. not always the criteria alone because mm -hmm. you know, someone might make a certain type of movie that the author might not want. Maybe they see a different vision for their book. Mm -hmm. And ultimately the author has final say because you know, being an author myself, I know right. your book feels like your baby mm -hmm. and you're, it's really important to you for it to land at the right place. So, you know, right. it would, some companies might have a director that they're working with, mm -hmm. an actor or a writer that the author mm -hmm. likes. Mm -hmm. Even if they're offering less money, they might want to do it in a way that the author feels comfortable with. And so right. oftentimes you'll actually go for less money uh -huh. um, if you believe in the project more. Or it could happen either way. So basically you're the agency or the coordinator who gets the author to talk with the company who bids for yes. the movie. And however, the author gets the final say. Yes. Exactly. Mm. But you're so a representative for them, we right? We represent them and we guide them in the process because, you know, oftentimes if you're an author, you don't really, like, I remember as an author myself, people would ask, like, oh, would you ever adapt your books mm -hmm. into movies? And I would say, 
I mean, it's a whole different world. Right. So you're basically working with the writers yes. more than the movie company, right? Yeah. You're working with both of them and liaising and helping uh -huh. out. Um, and it's so it's really important to have relationships with authors and writers and also with production companies and studios in Hollywood. And obviously you're a writer yourself, so right. you basically <laughs> understand. I mean, these are all your amazing books. Look at these yeah. one, each one of these. I remember the first time I saw you, there was only two books. Yeah. Now, now the third, third installment, which is this one, right? Yeah. I remember two years ago, this was in the planning, and now look at it. It's a polished gem, <laughs> and look how thick it is. Oh, it how long did it take up. you to write this? This one took a lot longer to write because I was in college for mm. a big part of the time, and right. so I was balancing double majors with extracurricular activities mm. and writing. So the first two, I, I know, were here, um, but the third one just came out a week ago. Right. Um, and so far the responses have been really good. Well, congratulations. Thank and you so I much. bet it's good because the first two installments is amazing. Now, how did you get this job going back to the mm -hmm. agency? Obviously, it's a big big role. Yeah. How did you get this job? I was super fortunate. So, I when I was in college, I found out that an alumni actually from the college uh, that I was at worked at this company. Right. And so I found her email and I mm -hmm. emailed her my resume saying mm -hmm. I'd love an internship. So I started off as an intern working at this company and basically, you know, learning as much as I could, finding out which areas there were and getting to know everything, reading a lot, reading scripts, books, everything I could get my hands on. And then finally, you know, they hired me full time. And I've wow. been there for about two years now, a little over uh -huh. two years, and it's been fantastic so far. So being there for two years, working as the uh, agency, right? Yeah. What is the best thing about your job? the best, absolutely yeah. best thing, the thing you love the most? The best thing is I get to read now as part of my work. So mm. I've always been a voracious reader since I was a kid. I mean, obviously with the books. And now I would never have thought and dreamt as a child that my work would mean I would get to read and watch movies. As so part this of is your hobby, reading. Yeah. And watching movies. Yes. And now you get to do both. Because I've always loved stories. That's the mm. thing is the essence of it is I want to be a storyteller and I want to help people tell really cool mm. stories and also tell stories myself mm. and this career definitely allows me to do that wow amazing yeah. absolutely so it's basically your hobby to read to watch movies and yeah. obviously to write yeah. as well i mean there are perks that you know you get to meet really cool writers directors actors and actresses it's, yeah. it's really awesome um and being in an industry where everyone is very passionate about mm. stories and movies um but I love talking with fellow authors and they're, when they find out that I'm an author too, mm. it creates this really special bond with someone. Yeah. Um, so it's just it's pretty fulfilling. And basically you're the center as well that connects the two sides together. Yes. So it must be amazing. Yeah, living in the <laughs> middle, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously there are great things, mm -hmm. but with big roles, great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> yes. What are some problems that you face and how did you fix yeah. them? Well, I was definitely the first, um, one of the first Thai people to ever break and work in Hollywood. Mm. Um, not from the side of being an actor, but right. from being, you know, working on the executive side. Uh, it was definitely a challenge to get a visa, uh -huh. a working visa there, to yes. convince, basically you have to convince the, you know, the US that you can do this job that not everyone else can do. Mm. Um, so that was a big hurdle for me, was like mm. the work permits, overcoming right. that, becoming, you know, the very first Thai person to break into this side mm -hmm. of the industry. Mm -hmm. um, but it really gives you a niche because now I'm able to say I have this other international perspective that's able to help. Mm. So can you give some inspiration to Thai people? It seems that Thai people mm -hmm. are scared to step out of their boundary yeah. or they feel that I'm Thai, English is not my first language, yeah. maybe I can't compete with the other people, but obviously you have such a big role and you're Thai. Yeah. Can you give Thai people inspiration that they can do that? Definitely. I mean, everyone, people seem to be surprised when I tell them that English is not my first language. It's yeah. actually my second language. Mm -hmm. I spoke Thai up until I was you know, six or seven. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm still full. I can read, write Thai, everything. Mm -hmm. And I identify as a Thai person. Yeah. And I think it's really important for Thai kids to follow their dreams and to, for their parents also to you know support them. Mm. And not always, oh, you have to be a doctor or an engineer or a certain job. I mean, for me, I wanted to be a storyteller. And mm. my family, I was very 
lucky that my family was supportive in that right. and I was able to you know follow my dreams and go after it mm. with that soul vision mm. um, so I'd love to tell you know any Thai kid out there if you're watching that mm. if you have a dream um, to pursue it and to just do a lot of you know your work research read a lot find out get experience but also just believe in yourself and that Thai people really can you know break into the international market Talking about your English now, your English is obviously great, not just speaking, but mm -hmm. writing as well. That's why you're an <laughs> author, writing English books. Yeah. What kind of tips can you give Thai kids watching right now yeah. to improve their English mm -hmm. skills? Just I, please, go ahead. I would say definitely um, to start just basically watching movies in English. Mm. So, you know, maybe instead of watching things that are dubbed in Thai, watch them in English with the Thai subtitles. Mm. So that helps also. And like, for example, with my books, um, we have for every edition, we'll have a Thai version and an English version as mm. well. So a lot of kids who want to learn a language will buy both versions and yep. read them side by side. Mm. And that way they're able to, you know, practice their language, vocabulary, uh -huh. grammar, and really learn along the way. You know, I know people get a little embarrassed in practicing, but you realize that people don't really judge you for an accent uh, yeah. there. They're like, oh, you're Thai, of course. Like, mm. So I would just say, just go for it and you know, keep practicing. Okay, so thank you very much and good luck with your third installment. Thank and obviously so we get to see a fourth installment because of the <laughs> su current success that we see in the first, second, third. There should be a fourth as well. Yeah, a and different series. I'm sure there'll be more bucks. Absolutely. <laughs> so this is one of your hobby and you've done it very well. Yeah. And good luck in representing all the great books that we see into a movie one day. Thank okay. you so much. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. You just met one of Thailand's great author who write books in English. And these are all English books that people around the world enjoy. So it doesn't matter where you're from or who you are. If you stay motivated, you can do it. And hopefully we get to see all these great books turn into movie represented by this person, a Thai person. All right, so we're all out of time. We'll see you next time. Sawadee kap. Sawadee kap. Thank you to Nong Pa Pia for coming back and updating her life with us. It's really good to see you again, and we'll be cheering for you in the future. And now it's time for English Corner. Let's see what the Jan Pui and the Jan Kip have for us today. สวัสดีค่ะคุณผู้ชมคะขอต้อนรับเข้าสู่ English Corner ค่ะดิฉันปุ๋ยสิตาค่ะกิฟติตาสุพางค่ะพี่ปุ๋ยขาค่ะเมื่อวานกิฟไปห้องสมุดมาเป็นเรื่องที่ดีมากๆค่ะคุณผู้ชมค่ะไม่เลยค่ะโมโหงุดหงิดสุดๆโมโหงุดหงิดใช่ไปห้องสมุดทําไมต้องโมโหและงุดหงิดคะเวลาพี่ปุ๋ยไปห้องสมุดพี่ปุ๋ยคาดหวังว่าห้องสมุดจะเป็นยังไงคะสงบเงียบต่างคนต่างอ่านหนังสือใช่ค่ะไม่ใช่เลยค่ะอ่ากิฟไปเจอคนที่เขานั่งเล่นการพูดกันเสียงดังมากแล้วกิฟทายังไงคะกิฟเกือบจะหันไปบอกเขาแล้วว่า stop it อุ้ยแรงอ่ะระงับไว้ทันอ๋อเหรอคะค่ะดีค่ะรู้สึกว่าอาจจะไม่ค่อยสุภาพเท่าไหร่ใช่คือเวลาเราพูดประโยคนี้นะคะ stop it คือใครทําอะไรอยู่แล้วเราต้องการจะหยุดเขาอย่างเงี้ยเราก็จะพูดประโยคนั้นค่ะหรือ stop doing that อ๋อค่ะอะไรแบบนี้แต่ค่อนข้างจะแรงมากในกรณีนี้ก็คือหยุดพูดเสียงดังหรือหยุดพูดกันได้แล้วอะไรเงี้ยใช่ไหมใช่ค่ะแล้วถ้าอย่างนั้นเราจะทำยังไงให้มันสุภาพขึ้นได้ล่ะคะถ้าสุภาพมากขึ้นวิธีแรกก็คือเติม please ลงไปค่ะอ๋อเช่น please stop it หรือว่า please stop doing that ใช่แต่ว่าในกรณีนี้เนาะมันก็อาจจะยังดูค่อนข้างจะรุนแรงไปสักนิดหนึ่งเนาะหวนหวนไปนิดนึงใช่ค่ะค่ะเราอาจจะพูดว่า would you mind not talking would you mind not talking ก็คือ,อคุณช่วยพูดเบาลงกว่านี้หน่อยได้ไหมไม่พูดเสียงดังใช่หรือว่าไม่พูดเลยอะไรแบบนั้นค่ะหรือที่ประโยคว่า would you mind not talking so loudly อ๋ออันนี้ก็คือคุณช่วยพูดเสียงให้เบาๆเบาๆ,ๆ,ๆ,ๆ,ๆ,ๆ,ๆ,ๆ,ๆ,ๆไม่ต้องดังแล้วนะอะไรแบบนั้นค่ะหรือถ้าจะให้แบบสุภาพแบบเบาๆนะคะ please be quiet ตัดไฟแต่ต้นลม please be quiet ใช้อันนี้คงจะดีกว่านะคะอะไรอย่างนั้นค่ะเอาละค่ะคุณผู้ชมคะบุตรขออนุญาตพันธุกิฟกลับไปที่ห้องสมุดค่ะไปแก้ตัวกันใหม่เผื่อจะได้ใช้ประโยคเหล่านี้ค่ะวันนี้เราสองคนขอลาไปก่อนพบกับ English Corner กันใหม่คราวหน้าสวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีค่ะ Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show. Unfortunately, it's all the time that we have. If you have any comments or suggestions you'd like to give us. 
please send it to the address on the screen. And also, check out our show through any of these channels as well. I'm your host, Bukit Tayarat. See you next time on Hello English. สวัสดีครับ